God, what would you have us do? Who are you calling us to be? We follow Jesus here. We fulfill God's mission here. Hey, SCC, thanks for joining our gathering today. Here at Shoreline Community Church, our mission is all about becoming and making disciples of Jesus as we gather, grow, and go. If you want to get connected to what's going on at SCC this summer, you can check out the Church Center app or visit us at shorelinecc.com. You can find information about summer connect events, groups, and so much more. You can also fill out a connect card to share prayer needs and praises and also ask for more info on things like how to be baptized or what it means to become a member. If you're new around here, be sure to bring your connect card out to the lobby where we would love to meet you and get you a special guest gift. Now here are a few things coming up at SCC. Ascent Youth, we are having a summer beach bash at Sheridan Beach Club on July 7th from 4.30 to 8.30 p.m. They'll be swimming, kayaking, paddle boarding, and so much more. We'll have food and games, and it'll just be a time to connect. If you have a student who's going into sixth grade, be sure they come. It'll be a great intro event for them. Registrations are open and live on the Planning Center and Church Center app. Now that the weather's warmer and you're thinking about those summer meetups, I'd love to invite you to a meetup at Edmonds Marina Beach Park on Sunday night, July 16th. And we're gonna have a very special beach baptism at Edmonds Marina Beach Park at seven o'clock on July 16th. So come anytime from six to eight for the meetup at seven o'clock. If you're interested in being baptized, we would love to see you there. Youth Camp is coming up and it's something you won't want to miss. Youth Camp is July 25th to the 29th. Registrations are live on the Church Center app and on shorelinecc.com. Your tithes and offerings make a huge impact on the lives of people here in Shoreline and also all around the world. Thank you so much for faithfully supporting our community through your prayers, finances, and time. You can give in the offering boxes at our in-person gatherings, or if you prefer to give online, you can give at shorelinecc.com or through the Church Center app. We're so glad you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us today. We hope that at SCC, you always find a community of love, acceptance, forgiveness, and belonging as we pursue Jesus together. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Pastor Tiffany Jones, for those of you that may not know me, and I am the Student Ministries Pastor here at Shoreline Community Church, and I am honored and privileged to be your speaker for today. Um, so as we talk today and as we go through this message, I want us to really focus on how do we live our lives wisely. Um, like I think where we all struggle as human beings is in making changes in our lives as we want to improve our lives, right? And making wise choices as we make those changes. Because as we all know, it is easy to start something well, but it is in creating the consistency of living that out in the wisdom of our choices that transformation happens. See, we've been looking at different verses in Proverbs about wisdom and for different areas of our lives. So in the first week, we talked about how fearing the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And then last week, Pastor Dwayne talked about how we can have wisdom in relationships. He looked at parenting and things like that. And today, I want to focus on how we can use wisdom in our daily lives for every single area of our life um, and really look at how wisdom is for everything. And the book of Proverbs is beautiful for that. So before I get into the heart of this message, I'm curious how many of us right now are trying to make a very important decision for our life. Like I believe at some point, all of us are trying to figure out things. We just recently had students who graduated, whether that's high school or college or their doctorate, and they're suddenly trying to decide, okay, do I continue in education or do I go and find a job? Or maybe it's, should I be in a relationship or should I be single? Or should I buy a house or should I keep renting? Should I pay off my car first or my credit card debt? Or maybe it's, should I get a pet? Should I get one dog? Should I get two dogs? Because for me, it's always going to be dogs. Um, but I bring this up because as I've gotten older, um, and even as I've become a parent, I've learned and realized that how our life goes is all about the choices and decisions we make. So if that's true, how do we choose well? How do we live well? And over time, I've come to realize this truth, and it's that we make our decisions 
but our decisions make us. In other words, who we are today is a direct result of the decisions we made yesterday. And I say this all the time to our students, and I want us to think about it now. Who we become tomorrow will be directly impacted by the choices and decisions we make today. And so what I want us to do today is look at a better way to choose, to make decisions in order to honor God and to live a godly life. So what I want to do is start off with some context. I have always been a huge history nerd. I'm not going to apologize for it. I love it. And I think that when we look at context and history together, it gives us a deeper understanding of what God is trying to teach us, especially when it comes to the Bible. So we've been going through this book of Proverbs. And for those that don't know, Proverbs is written by King Solomon. Uh, And There is this point in the the Bible where King Solomon goes before God and he asks God to help him. And God says, you know, you have been so faithful. I will give you anything you ask for. And in 2 Chronicles, Solomon says, God, please give me wisdom. Give me wisdom in how to lead my people, people well. And it's from that wise and discerning heart with divine inspiration from God that we see Proverbs really emerge. Now, I want to just for one moment take a second and recognize what an astounding thing it is that Solomon asks for wisdom. Because if me, for me, when I first read this, even as a kid, I thought about that old, like, Uh, idea where people say, okay, you have a a lamp and a genie appears and he says, I'll give you three wishes. What do you wish for? And every time I was asked this as a kid, I would say, well, I would wish for an eternity of wishes. And so I put myself in Solomon's shoes and I'm like, God says he'll give you anything. Like I'm asking for money. I'm asking for power. I'm asking for all of these things, right? But Solomon, his heart is so attuned to God in this moment that he says, you know, God, I need wisdom to lead well. And so Solomon asks for the thing that he thinks will help him lead his people well. And this is what God says in 2 Chronicles 1, 11 through 12. It says, since you asked for wisdom, not only am I going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you all of those other things as well. And from that gifting of wisdom, we see Solomon go on to write more than anyone else about wisdom and wise choices and how to live this out daily. And over and over again, Solomon continuously says wisdom is better than anything else. In fact, he says in Proverbs 16, 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver. Now, I cannot overstate what a big, big thing it is that he says how much better is wisdom than gold. Because what Solomon is doing in this moment is he's taking the number one commodity that the people in his lifetime valued, gold, right? Because for centuries and centuries, gold was what everybody wanted. Because gold represented wealth, gold represented power, gold represented prestige. And then what he does is he doesn't stop there. He then says, how much better is wisdom than gold? But then he takes the second most valuable commodity, silver, and he compares it as well. He says, choose understanding more than silver. See, what Solomon wants us to understand is that wisdom is so incredibly valuable for all areas of our life. And if we seek wisdom today in the decisions we make, not based on the wisdom that the world says, which is actually foolishness, but based on the heart of God, and we choose that consistently over a period of time, years and decades, our lives can go from average and mundane to someone who is impacting generations for the glory of God. But that only happens if we seek God's wisdom and live wise lives. See, wisdom is a daily practice that makes changes in our lives. So what what Solomon is saying is above all else, seek wisdom. Why? 
because living wise, godly lives should be our ultimate goal if we are following Jesus. If we want to glorify God, if we want to make a difference in this world, if we want to do more than take up space or accumulate things, then we need to seek wisdom. And that means that we seek wisdom in all that we do, and we ask God for discernment in what to do. See, what I love about Proverbs is God addresses wisdom in all areas of our lives throughout the book of Proverbs because it's not something, wisdom is not something we need every now and then or once in a while. It is something we need every single day. If you want wisdom, read through the book of Proverbs because Solomon writes about every facet of our life throughout that book. And he provides wisdom for whatever you might be going through. Examples include, if you're struggling with friendship, you can look at Proverbs 27, 17. If you're struggling with work, there's Proverbs 23, 4. If you're struggling with anxiety, there's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. If you're struggling with finances, there's Proverbs 14, 23. If you're trying to figure out how to give or what giving looks like for you, there's Proverbs 14, 21. If you need wisdom in parenting, there's Proverbs 22, 6. What I love about Proverbs and what I love about God is God says throughout the book of Proverbs that wisdom is for everyone and every part of our life. And he gives us Proverbs so that when the storms of life come in, when things and chaos surround us, we can have an anchor of wisdom to hold on to and move forward. But what we have to understand is when we seek wisdom for our daily lives, that wisdom will push us to make changes. And we may struggle making those changes because they might feel difficult or painful or impossible to achieve because living a wise life will cost us something. Listen to what Solomon says in Proverbs 4, 5 through 7. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it may cost you everything you have, get understanding. See, what Solomon wants us to know is it will be costly to be wise. But no matter what it costs us, go for it. Because wisdom will be worth it. Being wise means we may lose friendships, we may lose jobs, we may lose a feeling of security, but no matter what it costs, it'll be worth it. And Solomon, a man who goes on to have everything, he has power, prestige, money, fame, all of these things that the world says we should seek, what he says above all else is wisdom is more valuable than any commodity that this world can offer. And though it may cost you everything you have, get it. Why? Because wisdom will transform your life. And if you watch Solomon, all through his teaching, the way he speaks is in comparison and contrast. He compares and contrasts things. And so what Solomon goes on to do is he compares the foolish and the wise. And over and over again, he says, don't be a fool, be wise. Because he sees a problem amongst his people. And it's a problem we have today, and it's this. Fools don't realize when they're being foolish. See, fools don't realize when they're being foolish until after the fact. How many of us look back at things we wore or, or choices we made, and it's only afterwards that we realize we've actually been foolish, right? Like many times, those around us know we've been a fool far earlier than we ever do. So if we wanna cultivate wisdom, we need to seek wisdom from the one who created it. We need to seek God. And we need to seek and cultivate relationships with people who are wise enough and kind enough that they're gonna push us back to Jesus and the wise decisions that he would have us make. For example, how many of us act before we think? Or we speak before we think? We occasionally hurt someone because we don't think it through. Or if you're me, you can be prideful and think you're right, and so you can be slow to ask for help. And in the prop process, you make your life so much more difficult, so much harder than it has to be. 
There is a reason in our culture we say hindsight is 2020, and it's because only after the fact do we have the clarity to see that our actions and the decisions we've made aren't wise. They're actually really foolish. But this is why I love God, because he gives us Proverbs, this entire book, because he knows that we will need wisdom daily, not once, not twice, but daily because as human beings, we have a tendency to be foolish, to plunge ahead, to think we are right without thinking things through. And when in reality, what we need to be doing is seeking him and his word and the wisdom he provides. Because caution is wise. Being cautious before we move is a good thing. In fact, the Bible says this in Proverbs 14, 16. The wise are cautious and avoid danger, but the fool plunges ahead with reckless confidence. See, Solomon wants to teach us a, fool, uh, a few things, excuse me, about what a wise person does in their daily life. And so we're going to go over a couple points on what it looks like to be a wise person person and what a wise person does. So first, this is what he says. A wise person thinks before they act. A wise person thinks before they act, right? Like they pause, they look at their choices, they think about their life and the life they want versus the present that they're currently living. And they think about what they need to do to change course to correct for their future. They examine their actions and they make changes to avoid issues and pitfalls in the future. A great example of this is Proverbs 13, 16. It says, wise people think before they act. Fools don't and even brag about their foolishness. See, what God is saying in the scripture and what Solomon wants us to know is we become wise by thinking before we act. In the original Hebrew, the word used for wise or wisdom in this passage is prudent. And prudence actually means, the root of that word means to lay bare. When a person is wise or prudent, they lay bare everything. They lay it before themselves. So they lay bare their thoughts, their feelings, their ignorance, their plans, so that they can think everything through, see all the possibilities and outcomes, and then move forward. If you're anything like me, you love a to-do list, right? Like, I love checking those boxes off uh, and accomplishing things and moving on quickly to the next task. But in my experience, when we move too quickly to get things done and we wing it, we run the risk of missing something and looking like a fool. What Solomon wants us to know, what he's trying to tell us, is we have to take the time to slow down and think things through before we act. Lay our cards on the table. Look and examine the situation from all angles. Seek wise counsel and do our homework and research before we move forward. So how do we walk this out in our life? Usually this means we slow down. Now, if you've ever been to the church during the week and you see me working, uh, Terry Dobrich will attest to this. I run around the church. You'll see me running up the stairs to the NPR. You'll see me running out to the South Annex. You'll see me running down to the kids' department. I actually wear flat shoes so I can run everywhere to get things done. And I'm usually running out around the building trying to get as much done as I can as quickly as I can. But what I found is when I don't take the time to slow down, when I don't take the time to examine what I actually need to be doing, I'm way more likely to err and not get my priorities straight. I end up accomplishing nothing in the long run. So slowing down affords both us and myself the time to think things through, take a breath, and know that we're not responding out of emotion, anxiety, or in the moment, and it lets us research what the best response would be. If we get our order wrong, if we don't get our priorities straight, if we don't seek God first and pause, we end up looking like a fool. So we need to get our priorities straight and slow down. We have to research, we have to pray, we have to examine things, and then when God tells us to move, then move forward. In my experience, when I've taken time to think things through, I consult wise people around me. I have people who will push me back to my relationship with God and his word and seek that first for the wisdom of what to do. 
Thankfully, Solomon addresses this as well. And here's what he says, and it's our second step to being a wise person. A wise person seeks advice from others. Solomon says in Proverbs 19, 20, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. What Solomon is saying is a wise person will seek wise counsel or advice. Someone who is wise knows life isn't meant to be done alone. So they're intentional to get wise counsel. They seek it out. It doesn't just come to them or happen to them. They take steps necessary to get it, to ask for it. This can look like joining a community of people seeking the same goal as you, like our community here at Shoreline Community Church. It can be being vulnerable enough to ask for help when we're struggling. Um, And it can be being humble enough to receive wisdom and sometimes correction when advice is given. For a moment, I want to look at what living this out daily looks like because it's in the application of God's word that our lives are changed, that we make a difference. Because what are we called to do? We listen to God's word and we do it. It's in listening and then doing it that our lives are changed. So what does it mean to listen to advice and receive and do something with it? To listen and receive something means we come with an open heart and an open mind to whatever someone might say. And we go to trusted, safe people for that wise advice. We're vulnerable enough with them to be open with those that we trust and invite them to speak in our lives. And when they do, we have a humbleness that accepts direction and correction when necessary, asking ourselves, are we really being teachable? To do this, we have to be intentional to cultivate those relationships in our lives where we have people that we're in relationship with that are trustworthy, that will point us back to both God, but also his word. Those people need to love us enough and love God enough that they're willing to tell us what we need to hear, not just what we want to hear in the moment. Because seeking wise counsel and relationship can change the trajectory of our lives. Solomon doesn't stop there, though. He gives us a third thing, and he knows we need to learn a few more things, but this is the third thing, and one of them is this. A wise person seeks God for wisdom. You want wisdom? Ask God for it. Ask him. I don't think God could be any more direct or spell it out any clearer to us than in Proverbs 2.6 when he says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. See, if you need wisdom, what do we do? We ask God and we seek his word because God desires to be generous with us as his kids. He wants us to seek him. He wants us to be in relationship with him. Be intentional to cultivate a deep-rooted relationship with him and learn to trust him. Now, when we ask God for wisdom, we have to check our motives. And I want to go over this briefly. And what I mean by that is a lot of times we can seek wisdom from God and miss the whole point. If we're seeking wisdom just so we can say, okay, I went to God, I'm a good person, I'm going to check that box of doing the right thing, then we've missed the point entirely. See, we need to seek God and his wisdom because when we're in relationship with him, that ends up changing our perspective, and how we see things. Our focus, when we're in relationship with God, becomes a desire to see things from his perspective. And that will change how we view the world. Please understand that when we align our actions with his perspective, that's when his purpose for our life becomes our purpose as well. So how do we do this daily? What does this look like living this out? How do we put this into practice? This means we press into that relationship with him, seeking after him. We become intentional. That means we spend time quietly with him in prayer, or we read his word and we study it. We don't just zip through it as we read it, but we actually take the time to learn who God is, what he is saying, and what he wants us to know. So that in learning who he is, we can then begin to learn who we are, and that becomes more clear. 
We also soften our hearts and open our ears so that we can tune in to God's voice as he speaks through our life. And sometimes that means he speaks to us directly, but other times that means he sends people into our lives to speak on his behalf. Are we opening our ears and our hearts to that? And if we struggle to understand what this looks like, then we need to look to Jesus because he was the one who modeled this out beautifully in his actions and what he did daily. And if we are going to be followers of Jesus, then our lives need to look and model what he did daily. Here at Shoreline Community Church, we are all about discipleship. We say our mission is that we are all about becoming and making disciples of Jesus as we gather, as we grow, and as we go. And I've heard someone say that discipleship, when it's boiled down, is doing what Jesus did for the reasons that he did them. See, Jesus was wisdom in action. And his wisdom and what he modeled is meant to be modeled out in our daily life. So turning to God daily, seeking after him for wisdom in every area of our lives, just as Jesus did, is the way we change our lives. And in doing this, in seeking after God, we find the wisdom we've been searching for. And in that wisdom, we find hope. And in that hope, we find our purpose. And that purpose becomes our future. In fact, in Proverbs 24, 14, it says, Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. What this is saying is the wisdom from God will provide us what we need, and in finding what we need, that wisdom will become a balm for our soul. It will give us a hope for a future. God may not lay out the whole map of what our life will look like, but you can be sure that he will give you the wisdom for the next right step. And in seeking him, in finding that wisdom, we will be able to take that step. When we begin to seek God for wisdom and a relationship with him and he gives us that wisdom, that means he may ask us to make changes in our life, especially in who we let influence our life. Because this is the fourth thing Solomon wants us to know. A wise person hangs out with wise people. Now, this sounds so easy in concept. But putting into practice may be one of the hardest things we ever do in our life. See, one of my favorite scriptures in the whole of the Bible is Proverbs 13, 20. And it says, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Listen, if we want to be wise, we hang out with wise people. It's easy, right? But what does that look like in real life? What does it look like? to choose wise people to influence our life. I spoke previously about the need for community and how many of us have relationships outside the church. And we allow those relationships to influence the life we live. And even though we know those relationships may not be the wisest or may not uh, have the best influence in our life, we still choose those because we've chosen those people as our people. But make no mistake, The problem facing many of our students today is the same problem we struggle with. And that means that to be a Christian, to walk that out in our life every day in the Seattle area, for some of us, that means we might walk alone. Because last time I checked, being a Christian in this area, especially as a student, is extremely lonely because it can be hard, exhausting, and is an everyday battle. But as adults, we face that same problem just in different arenas, right? Just like our students, we want to belong. We want to fit in. We don't want to live life alone. And yet we look at the world around us and the friends we might have and the people we surround ourselves with, and they don't seem to have the life we fully want either. When I worked in the secular job market for the last 10 years, what I saw every day across my team was people who didn't like the choices they were making, and yet they couldn't seem to stop. So a lot of them had addictions they were struggling with, so alcohol, sex, drugs, porn, whatever it might be. I also saw people bounce from relationship to relationship, hoping to find fulfillment and happiness. I saw people bouncing in and out of friendships, seeking validation and worth, and coming up and feeling empty. 
I had friends who over the pandemic traded in marriages of 20 years so that they could pursue happiness with a new spouse, only to find out that it didn't bring the fulfillment they wanted. See, here's what I knew I had to do. I knew that those people in my life weren't going in the same direction that I wanted my life or my marriage to go. And I knew that if my life and my marriage were going to be different, I had to be wise and live differently. And what that looked like for me was making this church and the people in this community my people, my family. It meant that the, they were the people who deserved to speak into my life and have influence over the decisions that I made. I also had to let go of friendships that I cultivate, cultivated excuse me, for five or six years because those friends were no longer going in the direction that God had called me to go. And I'm not going to sit here and say that that was easy. It was one of the hardest decisions I had to make, but it also was one of the most valuable. See, I say this to students all the time, and I think it applies to all of us today. If we want the life that no one else has, then we have to be willing to make the choices and decisions with wisdom that no one else is willing to make. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I am not saying abandon all of your friends or live life alone at all. But what I am saying in my experience is we have to examine with wisdom who we let influence our lives, asking ourselves if they're going in the same direction that we wanna go. And if they aren't, is it wise to really let them continue to influence us? See, again, we make our decisions and our decisions make us. It's the wisdom from the heart of God that will allow us to do what God calls us to do, that will allow us to become a wise person instead of a fool. That wisdom lived out every day in all areas of our life, that is going to be the thing that changes our life. That is going to be the thing that anchors us when the world around us falls apart. So as I close today, I want us to reflect on some things as we prepare for a time of worship and as we prepare for a time of prayer. One, am I thinking before I act? Have I thought all my things through? Have I laid the situation before me, bare before the Lord and myself? If not, how can I start to think things through? How can I put that into practice? How can I slow down, take a breath, and really examine what's best? Two, do I have solid Christian relationships and influences in my life that provide me wise counsel, correction, discernment, and influence, influence me in positive ways? If not, how can I cultivate that? One great way is we have a variety of groups here at Shoreline Community Church that would love to connect with you and become your people, your tribe, so that you're not alone, but you're all going in the same direction. So if you are interested in gaining those connections or even hearing more about them, please be sure to fill out that online connect card so that we can get in touch with you and connect you to others in relationship. Third, are you seeking God and his relationship? for wisdom? Or are we trying to make wise choices on our own? If we are, how has that worked in the past for us? And what do we need to do to make a change? Again, as Solomon said, how much better is wisdom than gold to get understanding than silver? I'm going to close out in prayer and we're going to head into a time of worship, but this is a time to reflect and really think about what God is calling us to. Father God, I just pray that your heart would become our heart. God, that your purpose would become our purpose, that we would seek you and your wisdom and what you would have for us. God, that we would just lay everything bare before you, that we would look at who we let influence our lives, that we would seek wise counsel, and that we would seek you and relationship with you and your word for the wisdom we so desperately need every day. We thank you for who you are and all that you will do in us and through us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed as we talked about seeking God and relationships with Him and His people for wisdom. As we get ready to close, won't you read the benediction with me? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Now go and live for Jesus. Jesus.